Welcome to another podcast episode of Nuggets with Sauce, thought leadership for thoughtful leaders, presented by me, Michelle Arts. I have my friend, Jason Forehand. As my guest, Jason is an amazing human being in so many ways, but I want you, Jason, to uh, kind of give us a quick intro to yourself. And as you know, here on Nuggets with Sauce, we do not use job titles. I, who cares? We can call ourselves anything we want. That's hardly the point. I'm more interested, and I think our listeners are more interested in knowing, you know, what's your passion or your purpose? I, I, I like to dive in by say, introduce yourself by saying, you know, what kind of, what fires you up? Jason, what gets you out of bed every day in a good fight? <laughs> well, I appreciate being here. And what fires me up is leaving a legacy of change. And I know that seems like, okay, it's Giving Tuesday today as we're recording this. And I'm sitting here thinking, you know, what can I do today and tomorrow and the next day to actually create change uh, around me? Because actionable change requires a key component action so uh uh, so that's what i am about and that's what gets me up that's what and that's what i love and admire so much about you jason (laughs) is you really are a guy of ideas and action and you are absolutely (laughs) one of the best change agents that i know in this world so all the more reason that i'm sure this is going to be one of many episodes (laughs) with with you on board um before we dive into the nuggets that you've brought to share today and and the and the special sauce that goes with uh what's a recommended i think you're going to share a recommended read yeah i actually have two these are these are the last two books i'm going to hold them up here but but the people that are listening Uh, in dale the daily what was that dustin dale the daily second chance and top down culture revolutionary leadership to drive results awesome and that's Lindsay dow so the last two books that i read were by dustin dale and uh, by Lindsay dowd uh, but all of this behind me, you can oh. only see part of it. And if you're yeah. listening in, you can't see any of it. But I have a bunch of partner books here because we have an amazing group of partners that we do just are super talented. Yeah. So. And those partners are all, of course, tied in very nicely to what you are such an amazing change agent around, which is mm-hmm. your uh, nonprofit organization, HR uh, for You, which I am very proud to be a member of. Yeah, which is yeah. going to segue us right on into the nuggets and sauce that we're going to get into for today's yep. episode. So uh, let's start by qualifying. It seems to me you 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 were getting pretty serious about the sauciness here. This is uh, <laughs> please explain your sauce logic, and then we'll start dipping into the nuggets. Well, you know, I come from a culinary background, I, so yeah. I chose habanero. Habanero. Habanero is this smoky, spicy flavor. It's so fantastic. Some people say that it has that extended heat where you don't get it at the very beginning, but you get that smoke and heat as it goes on. Oh. Uh, it, in the Scoville, so if you're if you're uh, the Scoville uh, heat unit, if you're looking at that and you want to know like how hot is Habanero, 100 to 300,000 in the Scoville heat units, which is 75 times hotter than a jalapeno. So Ooh. we're going to get, but we're not like ghost pepper. Right? No, we're, we're not. Go, we're, we're not ghost pepper. We're not going to scorch people to where you can't yeah, no. you know, taste anything. No, any longer. no, but, no. There's no joy in that. So you know, we might want to have a glass of milk off to the side to handle some of the. <laughs> here, but yeah, you know, this is. This is going to be. I mean, I think the nuggets that we're we're gonna you know be noshing on today are some pretty. Yeah, they get you pretty heated, don't they? Absolutely. I feel pretty hot and heated about it. So I think habanero is the way to go here in our conversation. So let's just not waste one more second of our time and dive right into these nuggets. So so you and I have had, I don't know how many conversations around this. And we posted on LinkedIn and all kinds of things. And I'm, you know, yelling about it all the time. But, you know, really, let's be real, Chase. And what chaps your ass and chaps mine too is the whole thing around the inequality and the rigmarole that's going on in this economy right now where people are just what well, not getting a living decent wage is that is that fair can i just tee that up and just hit that one right there yeah absolutely 
All and right. That's, that's nugget dunk number one right there. Absolutely. That's dunk number one. Yeah. Dunk number two would be that we have a lot of human beings mm. that are starting their companies within no forethought of what happens to the human beings that they bring on board when their ideas go south or their planning is not as good as they thought. And now they have to do something with the human beings that they have. So they hit a button back in their office and terminate people in December uh, so that people can have a wonderful holiday. That's dunk number two. Damn. Well, and, and I mean, isn't that just like the shittiest thing on the planet that any, I mean, I don't know which is worse probably. Well, I'm going to guess it is probably a little worse to do it before the holidays, but I think it's an equally big back slap to do it right afterwards. Like, oh, you know, got to hit the books or hit the numbers to close out the year. Yeah. And it's like the worst, I mean, is there, there's really never a good time mm. to do layoffs, but I mean, that's the worst time to do. Layoffs. And then, and then nugget number three. Mm is okay you've now made this horrible decision that there's no other way to protect your company and and really when we go back to it we talk about nugget number two we're going to talk about how you're protecting that top part of the pyramid but i digress right right now nugget number three you are you've now laid off people you've terminated people you did all of this wonderful stuff, usually at the latter part of the year, December being the favorite time period. And now you realize you made a mistake and you, you need some of those critical people and those brilliant minds that instead of you talking with them and engaging with them and caring about them as human beings to help you with the problems so that you didn't have to go through this, now you've laid them off and you want to bring them back. Oh, and they're so eager to come back to your ass kicking self, <sighs> aren't they? Oh, I know. Oh, I know everybody. Oh, yeah, I laid you off. And, and, and we like, wonder why people. You and your job and your and your livelihood and all the people that depend on you. And then, mm, yeah, you know, but could you come back in? I see the stuff on BuzzFeed. I don't know if anybody else looks at anything on BuzzFeed, but sometimes I just can't handle the real news of the world. <laughs> and so I look for the pseudo news of the world to try to lighten the load a little bit. And I, I see this stuff, kind of crap happening all the time, like people posting, you know, here's real life texts or stupid things that, you know, dumb bosses have done. And I've seen some stuff in this respect that you're talking about, Jason, which is you know, I basically told you, here's the door, but then I turned around and said, but I still need you to work. Okay. Like, yeah. hello. Yeah. And the sad thing is, and, and this is really, this, you know, ties into the, like the very first nugget, mm -hmm. but the sad thing is that there are more jobs than there are literally people oh, yeah. to fill them. And yet we're taking so long to bring people in and make decisions. There are all these people that have been out of work for six months or more. And we, when we get people in and we don't engage with them, we wonder why is there quiet quitting and why are people not happy at work and why is there disengagement and why do my surveys oh, look the way they do? People don't even want to work these days. Ah, <laughs> nobody wants to work. The lazy bums. <laughs> I I swear, if I actually hear another person that's in a leadership role say that out loud with real intent, like they really believe that, I, 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 I'm going to be like, oh, wait, please. I, I recently it's just pseudo reality. I never name names. I, I will protect innocence in a manner of speaking. But I, I did recently hear a, a, a business leader say, why can't they just be grateful that we're busy and they have jobs? And and that's, that's oh, a person, I mean, I, that's a I, person winced. Headed. I winced when I heard that. And I was like, okay. Now, you know, I understand leaders are frustrated about certain things going on in their business, but then it's a, to me, that's the whole opportunity to, as you said earlier, sit down, talk, listen. You know, one of your best resources are your human resources. And no, I don't just mean the department that everybody likes to go and bitch to. 
I mean, truly you're human beings. The solution that, first of all, in my world, you might disagree with me on this, Jason, but in my world, I figure all business problems are ultimately people problems. Because if there are no people, there is no business. Look, I'm a solopreneur. And if I don't show up to work, nothing happens. <laughs> right? Yeah. So whatever's going on, somebody made a decision, whether you as the leader, the boss, the owner, whatever, you made decisions about your people. You made decisions that either set them up for success or failure, right? Yeah. But don't forget that solutions to problems are also within your people. If you're willing to sit down and have reasonable adult conversations with them and say, hey, we're, we're staring down maybe some serious financial issues. Things aren't going the way that I had thought or planned. Like who's to say that somebody on your staff doesn't have some great ideas about, you know, like the last thing you should be doing is getting rid of your human beings. The Where's first that? 17. Where's that years. bell? Where's that ding, 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 ding? Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I need to get some sound. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. You have two really powerful tools. You have really, you have two really powerful tools. They're on either side of your body. Wow. And even someone like me who's losing my hearing and has to use, you know, stuff like this and is fighting not getting a hearing aid, but I need one. Mm -hmm. use listening, right. use the resources of the people that you put in place to help you with the future yeah. and to help you grow in the right way. Yeah. Because people a lot smarter than me have figured out that that ROI is tremendous yeah. and they've documented it well. So yeah. why are you not doing it? Well, Do you feel that burn? Do you feel that? I think it's just kind of the crappy, lazy way out to some degree. Like, oh, the simplest, easiest thing to do is just go to the bottom line and just skim, you know, because it takes work to have to try to fix things or or figure it out or go back to the plan and figure out where the, if there was a plan, by the way, what was that plan? And, you know, take the blame game out about whose plan was it, if there was one or who didn't plan. Mm -hmm. And then be like, look, we got to have some conversations. I mean, I, I very firmly feel that, you know, the best ambassador, the best salespeople for your organization, whatever it is that you're doing, really, ideally, are supposed to be your own employees. Amen to that. You know, now I'm, I'm not going to sell your stuff if you're crapping all over me and treating me poorly, including not paying me well. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, not giving me good working conditions and so on. And then, you know, if you're going to basically fire my ass because, you know, you're looking to save a few bucks hither and yon, uh, which is a short term typically yeah. fix, not a long term fix. Uh, am I necessarily going to say great things about that? Am I necessary? And by the way, uh, now that I'm out of a job, I don't have any money to put into the economy which could also impact the bottom line of your business. Yeah, I know Henry there's... Ford was a bit of an old crank and there were certain things about the old guy that I, I don't find exactly admirable, but I think he was pretty much onto something, don't you think? Where he's like, you gotta sell cars that are priced at a point that the people who build them can buy them. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm riffing a little off something different here, but it isn't that kind of the same thinking, right? Like unemployed people don't spend money. Yeah. I mean, you know, if we want things to change, mm -hmm. then we've got to be part of that change. Yeah. And that the we've come and had multiple conversations about mm -hmm. different things that are associated with our three nuggets. Mm -hmm. But, you know, deciding where you spend your dollars yeah. and how you spend your money and what organizations you're going to support. Yeah. You have the power, even if you're not part of that immediate, you know, problem or solution where you are, you haven't been impacted by being laid off or you're not the person laying anyone off. Mm -hmm. You still have the choice what you do to support that company and their widgets, you know, yep. whatever they're doing. Yeah. So, yeah. Make a choice to take actionable change right. and 
and be someone who shines a light on the great leaders and companies that are doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody in particular, do you think there's anybody out there who is doing it right? Oh, I think there's a lot of companies that are doing it right. Yeah. And what I are mean, they I, doing that's making that difference, big or small? Well, I mean, I'll give you a, a I'll give you a good example. A company like Vayner Media, who's huge from a standpoint of their global impact, but look at how Claude Silver and Gary V work together to create an engaged group of people that care and want to be there and are part of the solution and they care about them. Yeah. Claw, you know, both of them are part of the outliers group that you and I are part of. Yeah. And they are, I mean, these are, these are top notch human beings that care about other human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, you know, whether they have 1800 employees, I mean, it's, there are companies there are organizations, whether they're five employees or they're 5,000 employees, yeah. Niagara Cares. They're one of our sponsors. Why do they keep winning? Why do they keep winning all of these accolades? Mm -hmm. Why does Niagara Bottling Company in California with, you know, 15 plants, you know, want to align themselves with someone like me and what we're doing because they're doing great work yeah. and they care about pays. the community. It pays in the long run too, right? I mean, here's the other thing that I, I think, I, I wonder, do you think leaders are missing the point too? I think more than ever, especially with our younger generation workforce and our younger generation consumer market, mm. These are people who have money, or at least mom and dad have money, and they at least can direct where that money goes. They seem to care a lot more than anybody used to care about, you know, what what are companies doing? You know, we we talk about those those things around ES and G, you know. So so when we talk about in, environmental standards and we talk about governance and we talk about social justice and so on, I think do you feel that like more people are aware of Hey, where does this company stand on how it treats its people? Do they commodify them or do they, you know, to your point, like Niagara and other companies that are, you know, really putting their money where their mouth is and saying, we're not greenwashing things or word. I like to use the term word washing. Let's word, word washing. wash stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's better than that soap washing that your mom tried to do. <laughs> Don't go there. Mm. On either end of that spectrum. Don't mm. be the kid who needs that. Don't be the parent. That's just not cool. But word washing things like, oh, you know, we pay lip service to stuff. I mean, how many companies sit there and say, you know, our greatest resources are people. Well, so what are you doing? Yeah. Are you behaving that, in a way that proves that point? Yeah. So what are you doing? If if that is the statement, yeah. then what are you doing yeah. to create that? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what matters. Yeah. It, it really, at the end of the day is, you know, are you retaining people because they love to, mm -hmm. to be there? They love to work there. They feel like they have a growth plan that they yeah. feel safe to fail forward, that they feel yeah. safe to express ideas and to okay. share and grow and right. be part of a diverse community that cares yeah. about each other and is looking for ways to expand and, and grow, not only just within themselves uh, personally and from a mental health standpoint, we talk about that a lot these days, yeah. but beyond that, how are we helping our community? And how, how are we helping our the families and the communities that they are a part of? And so much of that spinoff that you're talking about, like what's the impact to the communities when we have layoffs and especially when yeah. the layoffs aren't like the last resort i mean i i don't know call me crazy uh like a fox but i'm like hey uh has it ever occurred to anybody for example to say if we're really tight on the finances at this point in the game would people be willing to temporarily and this is the key by the way because i know you know this didn't exactly go over well recently with some of the auto industry workers. You know, if you're going to say it's a temporary measure, make sure that it really is. But would you temporarily be willing to step back a few hours or step back a bit of pay if it means that you don't lose 100% of your job? 
You know, getting a partial paycheck might be better than getting zero paycheck. But again, talking to your people and thinking about, you know, because the minute you pull that money out of the community and you pull that business opportunity out of the community, it's like that ripple effect is crazy. I I think it needs to be from top down. Mm -hmm. So when you're at a place where there have been missteps and you see that there are struggles ahead mm -hmm. and you've done all the right things. You're engaged with your people. You have, you have really high retention. You've been talking about it, well, but things that's, are, a, that's a big you know, assumption right there. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're right going to, we're just yeah. going to go out there and say that, you know, you, you eat jalapeno peppers on a daily basis and habanero peppers yeah. like they are candy bars. Yep. You are just spicy. You're all in it. You yep. know it. You love it. And people love you and they want to be where you are. Great. Now you got to that point where, okay, now we've done all of these things. I don't see any other way other than X yep. laying off people or taking away money. The very first step really should be internal. Like, all right, so I've got 10 people that are at the top echelon of the company, the executive group. What are we willing to give up? How, what are we going to sacrifice? What's your bonus? Look at all these companies where people get paid bonuses for knocking people off the books. Yeah. Yeah. And and you and I talked about this earlier too. And I, you know, there's so many rabbit holes. I know uh, Chase and you and I could go down. But you know, what was the latest figure this year in terms of what what was it? Three on average, the average. Now these are larger companies, by the way. But let, let's be clear. We're talking some bigger corporate companies. What is it? Something like the average CEO is earning 300 times what the average worker at their company is. Yeah. Was it? I, am I right? It's something like that. It's it's crazy. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe start there. You Absolutely. Know, when the CEO is earning twenty nine million a year, uh, I don't know. Could you maybe take a bit of a pay cut? Yeah, I mean, I. It's not. We're not talking about that. You have a that that you as an executive leader are not worth mm -mm. what you make, or yeah. that you shouldn't go back to making that in different times right. we're talking about the fact that when we get to a place right. where human life where human beings are affected that you start looking internally and from the top down yeah and that makes a huge impact imagine if you're the head of a company and things are going well everything's been great all of the stuff that we talked about before, and now you're at this part, and you do that as a company to, you know, to put more money and funnel and hold things together and keep people going. Imagine if you do that, what the rest of your team is going to think and is going to do for you mm -hmm. in the long run. How differently they're going to feel about the company. Yeah. Oh, wow. Instead of laying us off, these guys all took pay cuts. They all made a difference. They're all sacrificing. Yeah. And here's yeah. and we're all talking about we're how we move forward. Right. How do we move forward? Yeah. And I think that that touches on something that you mentioned a few minutes ago, too, around engagement. And we're also in an engagement crisis hmm. in this economy. Engagement globally, not just here in America, where you and I are sitting, but, you know, as a global phenomenon, the research is alarming, like maybe one in three little, I think it's a little less than one in three workers are actually considered engaged at work. And by engagement, what we mean by that, just to clarify for anybody out there who's wondering, you know, we'll define that. Okay. Engagement means like, I actually want to step up and do something. Right. And like, not necessarily just the minimum. Like I actually want to get my ass out of bed in the morning and I want to come to work and I want to do a good job and play nicely with people and, and, you know, have a good day in my capacity at your company. Right. Yeah. That's an engaged worker. We can't get two out of three people in this economy to step into that mode. 
Now, what does it mean for people to see their, you know, how engaged is leadership and engaged with what? Are the leaders engaged with the people? Are the leaders engaged with leveraging their people, especially if, if you know, if we're facing down something like, oh my God, mission critical layoffs is, I mean, first of all, have you engaged with anybody to discuss with them? Like, how the hell did we get there? Yeah. How did we get to the point that we're even thinking that we're not going to have everybody on payroll? Yeah, this didn't happen overnight. This yeah. is, I mean, nine, you know, 99% of the time, this is a, uh, some overnight phenomenon. Yeah. You know, you were banking everything on one account. The one account said, no, thank you. There is a bigger problem that happened long before you got to that place. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Where I mean, are, where Black are you at? Friday here in America, but if you're pinning all your hopes on Black Friday happening and that's the only thing that's going to pull you through, we're in trouble. Yeah. That should be the bonus. Yeah. I, you know, my, my days, you know, culinary world really is a food retail. So culinary world and uh, the retail part of the service industry, mm-hmm. that, that last quarter shouldn't have been, and I always thought this, and this is what I really believe, that should be the gravy. That should be all the things that we're going to talk about for bonuses and stuff like that, because right. we just crushed that to throw us that much further over the top. Right. But everything else in the first three quarters is where we yeah. got to the place where, all right, we're doing well. Yeah. Now this is this. But yeah. the third quarter is huge for spending for people. It's still, even in this economy, yeah. you're, it, when the numbers all come out, you'll still see people that really didn't have money that are like probably leveraging themselves because they don't want their kids to have a poor Christmas or they don't want to show. And it's horrible. We've, we've made that a, I I don't want to go back. I don't want to go. We're going to go to like nugget seven over here. And I don't want to do that, but. We're going to have to do uh, a side prize or something to get all this covered for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a, there's a lot of complicated moving parts here. There's no doubt about it. But again, you know, it's just like if your model is, you know, to your point, if your model is like we're banking on uh, one month out of the year to get us through, we should be thinking about what about the other 11 months? Yeah, what did we yeah. do for the rest Are of Are we engaging our people? Are we leveraging? Because, you know, engagement is also very much tied to productivity. Yep. And so if if two thirds of your workforce aren't really engaged. That also means they're not really being as productive as they could be. And there's a whole, you know, there's a bazillion other episodes we're going to have to do to unpack all the reasoning behind that. But we've touched, you know, again, you've mentioned a few very key things, you know, what's the mental health status going on here? You know, what, are you paying me enough to do this dirty job or whatever it is? You know, there's all kinds of criteria, but it all comes down to the leader's Back to, you know, nugget number one and the whole thing, like, look, leaders need to be thinking and planning. And part of that process should be what's your best case scenario and what's your not so best case scenario and what's your contingency plan that isn't going to mean that because, you know, you know this and I know this and I, I if our listeners and viewers aren't catching on to this, you're going to find out fast. It's Fucking expensive to replace people. Yeah, absolutely. I cannot emphasize enough the lunacy of what it takes. No, I'm not saying, look, if you have somebody on your staff who actually truly does suck and you've done everything that you can to make them okay and they're just a lousy fit for whatever reason, that's a hiring issue, but that's another episode too. But if you've done everything else and they're still terrible, okay, that's one thing. You know, but it's like there's so much else going on here that you need to be thinking about and and processing in there. But it starts with the leaders like, you know, what are you what decisions are you making? What are you doing? And how is that impacting somebody's ability to get the job done, which is going to hit your bottom line? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's there's so many studies that are already out that have, you know, it's like, okay, how how much more do we have to put out to show yeah. that taking care of people yeah. and retaining them is pays, pays. much better than well, what you're doing. So what's yeah. the, what's the adage, you know, I mean, I would like to think in the, in the business world, here's the model that, you know, a lot of us talk about all the time. Is it easier and better to keep 
a customer or go convince somebody to become a customer. Yeah. Right? I think most of us would agree and probably, you know, any business course out there would tell you that it is far easier and cheaper to keep a ha- keep a customer happy and keep the customer than having to do all the work that it takes to convince somebody to become your customer. Yep. Why does that make perfect sense? But then when it comes to employees, that logic seems to go out the window. It's way cheaper and easier and better to find 50 ways to Sunday to keep your your staff. Who are, what did we say earlier? Your best people. ambassadors, your best. Your best, yeah. Your best, you know, they are human beings make up what you do on a daily basis. They are your company. Your company yeah. won't exist if your people, and that's what a strike is all about, dare I say. If people don't show up for work, there's no work. Doesn't happen. Yeah. And, you know, what's incentivizing people to get engaged and want to show up? And, you know, and by the way, even the fear, the likelihood, the possibility, the inkling. I've run out of words on that list, but whatever. <laughs> you know, because here's the other, here's the other mental bandwidth suck. If I'm even so much as thinking that things are unstable or my job is in jeopardy, or I don't know if there's, you know, I'm hearing about layoffs. I'm hearing, are we going to be next? Am yeah. I- what does that do to your mindset, to your mental health, to your engagement, your ability, your engagement, your ability to be productive? We call it presenteeism. My body's in the building, but I ain't really here. Right. Mm-hmm. That all that energy slides off sideways. So even, you know, being that leader who plans, being that leader who thinks about it, has contingencies, uses their people in the best way imaginable to their best advantage, and also communicate clearly with people. Like if things are starting to look tough, start talking about that and start, again, engaging people in what are we going to do about it? As opposed to the whammo, I got T-boned at the intersection at the last second, and I had no idea this was coming. And it's a shock. These things should never happen in a way that they are a surprise to anybody. Nobody should ever be fired without knowing why that that was coming from miles away. Nobody should be laid off. I mean, if it absolutely had to come down to layoffs, that should never come as a surprise to anybody. No, it should never be an, you know, an email that you got that the morning of don't show up to work. Yeah. That's by the way, you don't have a job anymore. Don't bother coming in here. Thanks. Thanks for your service. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. Oh man. You know, Jason, we are going to have to have many, many more conversations. <laughs> but, well, because I mean, there's so many elements to unpack here, you know, I mean, there, these are, and that's what I, that's what I love about, you know, having you join me in a conversation like this. And we need to keep, you know, filtering down those layers because nothing, nothing we talked about today happens in a vacuum. Nothing that really goes on in this world happens in a vacuum unless you happen to actually be using your vacuum because you're (laughs) cleaning something. That's the only time it happens in a vacuum or you're a research scientist using some sort of vacuum chamber. Outside of that, these things are not accidental. These things don't happen in isolation. And I think the more we can help our viewers and listeners understand and, you know, thread together that tapestry of how these things come together, Hopefully the better off everybody's going to be in the business world. I'd like to. Yeah, let's learn. Let's unlearn. Let's grow. I love that. Let's unlearn. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Well, awesome. I am so glad you joined me today here on Nuggets with Sauce. Thanks everybody else for tuning in. I am your host, Michelle Arts, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Nuggets with Sauce. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe so you get notified with new episodes as they come out. In the meantime, focus on setting yourself up for success and others too. 